represent this uh, working paper written jointly with uh, Amparo Urbano and from University of Valencia and Ismael Rodriguez from University of Granada, yeah. Standard versus Random Dictator Games, the defect of role uncertainty on generosity. Um, I would like to start by saying that uh, why politicians uh, break their campaign promises once they are in power. For example, uh, it's quite easy finding too many examples, but uh, I will uh, say just, uh, I will talk uh, only about the universal basic income. Many US presidents like Richard Nixon, George Bush or Barack Obama, uh, they appeared to endorse the idea of the universal basic income, but finally they did not implement it while they were in the power. And besides, besides of many other reasons, we could argue that uh, is the decision power likely to affect the level of generosity? In particular, uh, people may be more likely to exhibit generous behavior when they perceive it is unlikely that their choices will be implemented or selfish behavior when it's likely that their choices will be implemented. Uh, we can find an ample evidence about people may want to appear as fair to feel better than selfish or to receive rec recognition from the others. Uh, uh, our research questions are um, whether affecting the decision power by simply affecting the likelihood that choices will be implemented and the framing of the decision affect the level of generosity. In the, in the literature review, uh, it's well known the standard and random dictator games. And there are many topics uh, which, has, uh, which, which have been studied. For example, how role uncertainty influence, influences generous behavior, although this topic uh, has been very limited studied. Um, the other topics are how generosity responds to framing effects or the sense of ownership. Uh, it means the perceived decision power uh, which could affect generosity. Uh, we find the other papers uh, related to uh, general decision in risk environment. Procedural fairness and the behavior of participants in, prob in probabilistic dictator games. And how uh, the uncertainty refers to the possibility that the dictator's decision will be substituted by a random draw. Finally, uh, the literature uh, study how the cognitive load can also affect generosity. Our experimental design relies on a multiplied list dictator game where subject split an endowment of 10 euros with another unknown participant and we introduce the framing of the decision. Uh, it means the role of the decision maker in the dictator frame, subjects are told uh, you are decision with probability P. And in the recipient frame, subjects are told to be uh, the recipient, the receiver with probability Q. The range of both probabilities uh, range from zero to one, decreasing by 0.1. And we show two different multiplied lists. Uh, the first one, it's called pure uncertainty or T9. Subjects make a total of nine choices with the probability of being, with the probability of being selected as the dictators or recipient ranging from 0.9 to 0.1. It means that uh, you start with 
uh, um, with uncertainty. On the other hand, in the in pure uncertainty or P11, subject make a total of 11 choices with the probability of being dictators or recipient ranging from one to zero. Uh, the main difference is uh, that in the second uh, example, you start uh, with uh, um, absolute uh, certainty in that you will be selected uh, as dictator or recipient. Well, it's the main difference. Uh, for final setting, we show four different treatment, dictator and recipient uh, with uh, pure or impure uncertainty. And here you can see uh, the decision table for the uh, impure uncertainty treatment. On the left, uh, the dictator frame. On the right, the recipient frame. Focusing on the dictator frame with impure uncertainty, it's clear that uh, your choice it should add up to 10 euros and you uh, must to split your endowment um, a certain amount of money for you and a certain amount of money for the receiver in case you want to split the, the endowment and you start uh, with a priority one, you make your uh, decision with priority 0.9, blah, 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 uh, and finishing with priority equal to zero. Um, on the other uh, hand, for the recipient frame, they start by uh, taking decision with priority Q equal to one, uh, you will be receiver and they finish with the priority Q equal to zero, you will not be receiver. Uh, okay. I hope it's clear the experimental design. Uh, we collect the usual basic demographic variables. Um, also, uh, like uh, such as uh, age or gender. Also, we elicitate risk attitude using a modified version of the whole law in 2002. Uh, this um, version is proposed by Brian Sexol 2019. They use five choices instead of 10. Uh, as in whole law in 2002, every subject is asked to choose between two lotteries a and B. Both A and B offer a low and high payment with probability Q and one minus Q. This uh, probability is not the same than the ones related to the recipient frame, okay? If, uh, we are not talking about the recipient frame. We are talking about the modified whole lottery version. Uh, here, uh, you can see the different lotteries and the neutral player uh, will choose uh, the one who uh, gives him the highest payment. Also, we use the cognitive reflection test proposed by Frederick 2005. It's a series of questions um, that you can read them about an about an board cost uh, one dollar ten cents in time. The bat cost one dollar more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? And there are two questions more. Here uh, we can collect two kind of answers: the intuitive answers and the correct answers. Okay, and it's a measure uh, of mm, how uh, well our subject. Um, think about the questions, okay? We collect the intuitive and the correct answers. We can collect collect them. Sorry, but I have an issue with stuttering, okay? Uh, uh, that's the reason because my speaking is not so fluent. Oh, 
also our president, our new president. So it's really not a big deal. <laughs> Besides of any other comments, uh, uh, we are so glad that the US uh, president also has an Saturday issue and for our, um, for, uh, for us, it's a good news. Uh, but besides of any other comments, I'm not going to tell anything about it. Uh, thanks for uh, for support uh, for your support. Uh, finally, uh, we collect some measures on social preferences um, related to altruism and envy. Um, we all know the seminal paper written by Ferenc Smith in 2006. We ask participants to self-report whether and how they agree with, I do not care about the money I have, I do care if others have less money than I have, which implies altruism. And the other question is, I do not care about the money I have, I do care if others have more money than I have, which implies envy. About the procedures, uh, the experiment was carried out in, at the University of Seville, Last year, we recruited 200 participants, but finally 172 participants show up. Uh, they were, in average, uh, 22 years old. Our, balance, our uh, data set was balanced in terms of gender with, with 54% with with of uh, female. The giving average was uh, 5 euros certified uh, cent of euros. And in relation to the CRP, uh, our subject did not perform so well. And they were not uh, so envious, neither uh, so generous. Uh, in relation to the um, social preferences measures. And it was a show up payment of five euros. At the end of the experiment, we randomly selected one of the rows in the multi-branch list for payment by extracting a number board from a box. We then implemented either the dictator or the recipient choice depending on the probabilities associated to the selected row by extracting a second board from a different box. box. I mean, imagine that the first number is five for the impure uncertainty treatment. So it implies that row five is selected for payment. It implies that P and Q are equal to 0.6. So the dictator's choice will be implemented with a probability of 0.6, while on the other hand, the recipient's choice will be implemented with a probability of 0.4. Finally, we extract a second ball from a different urn. If the number was 1 to 6, we implemented the dictator's choice. If the number was uh, from 7 to 10, we implemented the recipient's choice. Uh, we set uh, different hypotheses, but uh, we remind that the theoretical prediction under the assumption that the subjects are purely selfish is that they will, not, they will give nothing away regardless of their role in the game or the probability that their choice will be implemented. So, all choices should be the same in the multi price list. So we set hypothesis. Uh, hypothesis one, giving decreases with the probability that the decision will be implemented. Uh, or hypothesis two, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know, if, uh, I don't know if you can see it uh, fully, but I will try to explain it. Hypothesis two, compared with the uh, dictator treatment, Giving in the receiving treatment, giving the receiving treatment is higher because of the role of priming on empowerment, or hypothesis 2B, 
giving in the recipient treatment is lower because of, because of the cognitive load associated to the task. Finally, we set our third hypothesis. Giving in the impure uncertainty treatment is lower than giving in the pure uncertainty treatment. Here, uh, you can see some figures. Um, we can easily say that uh, it's clear the negative trend between giving and the probability uh, of that your choice will be implemented. Uh, it's clear the negative trend at any cases. For the T9 treatment and for the T11 treatment, pure uncertainty, in pure uncertainty. Also, uh, mm, it shows that the uh, that giving for the recipients is uh, higher than giving for the dictators in both uh, cases. On the right, giving for the recipient is higher as well, is higher than for the dictators. Um, well, we run out uh, different parametric, uh, the, the non-parametric analysis and the test shows, the, the test show, sorry for my pronunciation, the test shows that there is a negative trend in every possible treatment and we find support for our first hypothesis. So uh, our first result is subjects give less, it means they are more selfish, when there is a high probability that their choice will be implemented. Also, uh, in relation to the framing dictator versus recipient, uh, the dictators are less generous than, re than recipients in T9 and in T11. Uh, dictators are more uh, selfish under pure uncertainty and under impure uncertainty. So the test provides support for our hypothesis to A. Dictators are more likely to choose the selfish allocation, giving nothing, and less likely to choose the fair allocation, giving the half of the endowment. So we get, we get our second result. Um, subject give less. It means subject are more selfish when they are in the dictator framing compared with being in the recipient framing. Just to interrupt quickly, you have a minute to go. Perfect. I'm finishing right now. Uh, thanks so much. And in relation to, uh, sorry, uh, in relation to the impure versus pure uncertainty treatment, we uh, restrict our attention to the probabilities from 0.1 to 0.9, and the test shows that subject in the dictator frame do not behave differently, but recipient, but subject in the recipient frame are more generous in the pure uncertainty than in the impure uncertainty. Uh, finally, uh, in the receiving uh, or third result, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, in the receiving frame and the, uh, starting under impure uncertainty makes subject more selfish compared with under pure uncertainty. Uh, the econometric result, we uh, estimate the OLS, the Tobin and the Hardell model, uh, they confirm our uh, pre previous results. And we also find that age, gender, cognitive abilities, risk preferences, and uh, measures of social preferences do not seem to have any effect on choices. Uh, or the final conclusions are that generosity decreases as long as the probability of being the, the decision make, uh, maker increases. Uh, the second result, Making a choice in the frame of dictator re reduce generosity 
and the range of probabilities may affect the decision of subjects in a resilient framing. Um, that's all I wanted to share with all of you. Thanks so much for your attention. Um, uh, it was a pleasure to have the chance of being with all of you. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it.